they sell us their oil uh, and what are we doing you know what are they doing with the proceeds they're buying gold instead of putting it into treasuries they're buying gold and we're creating more debt in order to buy energy from these countries they used to buy our debt but now they don't so we have to sell that debt to, to the UK and to the Cayman Islands and the Ireland and Ireland if you believe that but this is a, a doom loop in the respect that these BRICS nations continue to pile into gold and other commodities with the proceeds of the energy we buy from them and the commodities we buy from them, which, which only pushes those, those prices up higher. And, and when you talk about gold going higher um, as part of the new BRICS currency settlement, which will be deliverable. Are we witnessing a seismic shift in global economic power? Andy Schechtman delves into the strategic maneuvers of the BRICS nations, highlighting their systematic reduction in bond holdings and a pivot towards gold. In this analysis, we'll explore Schechtman's insights into how this shift impacts the West, particularly the United States and the United Kingdom, and what it means for the future of global economics. Stay tuned as we unravel this complex narrative and its implications for the global financial landscape. Schechtman begins by outlining the methodical approach of the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, in selling off their bonds. This move is not isolated, but is part of a broader strategy where these nations are simultaneously increasing their gold reserves. The significance of this shift cannot be understated. As the BRICS nations offload bonds, the traditional Western powers like the United States and the United Kingdom are plunged deeper into debt. The paradox here is stark. Debtor nations are purportedly buying debt to pay interest on previous debts, creating a precarious financial situation. Schechtman emphasizes that while the BRICS nations bolster their gold reserves, Western countries face a dearth of energy production and natural resources. This dependency on external resources further complicates the financial strain. An article highlighting the UK's reliance on foreign commodities underscores the gravity of the situation. The United States mirrors this predicament lacking sufficient energy and resource production while relying heavily on imports from countries that are no longer keen on buying Western debt. Schechtman sheds light on a crucial aspect of this dynamic, the limited energy production and factory capacity in Western countries. With China dominating rare earth production and refining, and the BRICS nations holding significant energy resources, the West finds itself in a vulnerable position. The shift from these nations selling bonds to accumulating gold only exacerbates the financial imbalance. The BRICS countries are leveraging their commodities and energy resources to strengthen their economic position. As they sell oil and other resources to the West, they reinvest the proceeds into gold rather than Western treasuries. This creates a doom loop where the West's dependence on BRICS commodities drives up prices, further benefiting the BRICS nations and reinforcing their strategy of moving away from dollar-denominated assets. One of the most significant developments Schechtman discusses is the potential introduction of a BRICS currency settlement mechanism. This new system, which could be partially backed by gold, represents a monumental shift from the U.S. dollar-dominated financial system. The potential for 59 more countries to join the BRICS bloc, as discussed in a recent summit, indicates a growing movement towards a new economic order. Schechtman points out that this currency would likely involve each country holding its own gold reserves, a significant departure from the current reliance on Western financial institutions. The repatriation of gold by countries like India from the Bank of England underscores a broader trend of nations reclaiming their gold reserves. This move is pivotal, as it indicates a growing mistrust in the Western financial system and a shift towards self-reliance and asset-backed currency. They've done things very methodically for quite some time. And, you know, we're all aware that China and now even Japan to a degree, Russia, Saudi Arabia, they've all been selling bonds. Let's just say the BRICS nations have been selling bonds, right? At the same time, arguably, they're buying gold, which we can see. Uh, at the same time, the United States and the United Kingdom and these Western nations that we're supposed to believe are buying our bonds are going further into debt. We're supposed to believe that the United Kingdom and Ireland and the Caymans are are you know, these are debtor nations that are buying our debt, which we need to sell in order just to pay the interest on the previous debt. And so we see a situation where the US and the UK continue going further into debt. And these countries have virtually nothing in the way of energy production. There was a 
article that just came out and, and commodities it came out on the UK a few months ago by some politicians saying we've got ourselves in a bad place. We're reliant on mainly China and the rest of the world for the majority of all the things we need, these natural resources. You could say the same thing about the United States. So we have very way, very little in the way of, of energy and, and natural resource production where last year I read an article that eight, 70, 80% of all the rare earths were produced in China and the Eurasian continent, but 100% were uh, refined in China. Um, that's kind of emblematic of it. But these other countries, so we have very little in the way of energy production and factory capacity. All the factories are in China. They, they make everything. We make nothing. And we're going further into debt buying government debt. They're buying our debt, the UK is, and we're going further into debt in order to buy commodities like oil and energy production from the BRICS countries who instead of so, you know, they sell us their oil. Uh, and what are we doing? You know, what are they doing with the proceeds? They're buying gold instead of putting it into treasuries. They're buying gold. And we're creating more debt in order to buy energy from these countries that used to buy our debt, but now they don't. So we have to sell that debt to, to the UK and to the Cayman Islands and the Ireland and Ireland, if you believe that. But this is a, a doom loop in the respect that these BRICS nations continue to pile into gold and other commodities with the proceeds of the energy we buy from them and the commodities we buy from them, which which only pushes those those prices up higher. And and when you talk about gold going higher um, as part of the new BRICS currency settlement, which will be deliverable, um, this just falls right into the hands of of the BRICS countries. So the longer they wait the higher the price goes in gold um, and the more reliant the West is upon them for these commodities. And at the same time, you have a massive growing mass. 59 more countries said they want to join coming out of Novograd two weeks ago. This is something that when you have more and more and more and more countries sign on officially, all accepting a common settlement currency that is not U.S. dollars that is that, that is settling in essence in gold, which is 40% gold, which is deliverable, which is held within the own borders of these countries. And that's a very important point here. If you In the unit white paper, it talks each one of these countries will hold their own gold. So when you see this mass repatriation effort, and in particular, India is a good example, repatriating 100 metric tons they've held at the B of A, excuse me, at the, at the Bank of England, B of E, Bank of England since 1991, and all of the countries repatri repatriating their gold from the New York Fed. Well, that makes sense. These countries understand they can hold their own gold. They'll continue to buy gold because it will be what they settle in, which has outperformed the bond market two to one over the last 25 years with no counterparty risk. So the longer they wait, the, the, the more countries join on, the higher the price of gold is going to go and the more trouble that that the West will have in, in in I think finding natural resources and and people willing to hold their debt. So, would it surprise me if they issued it in October? No, it wouldn't. But I think it would also not surprise me if they waited another year. To your point, in 2025, and James Rickards has an interesting take on it. He says, "Yeah, it's all about mass adoption. That right now there's 10 countries that they can shop with if they had a common settlement currency. 10." Uh, what happens if it's 69? If they said, fine, the other 59 are in. Now you can buy goods and services from 69 countries instead of from 10, which was previously five. And pretty soon you have such a massive swath of GDP, human population, commodities, shipping lanes, military might, that not only is it a massive, massive uh, um, real entity in every single way, but then issuing that common settlement currency, it's almost 100% guarantee that it works to a massive detriment to the dollar, to the treasury market, and to the way things have always been in this country. We went to Iraq looking for weapons of mass destruction. Sorry, we didn't find any. It's That's that's the difference, and here we are 20 years later still there. Uh, the This is what they've always done through coercion. 
Um, and now look at how different things are. You got Saudi Arabia just warned the G7 that if they steal the 300 billion in sovereign assets, that they will sell their European bond holdings, starting with those issued by the French Treasury, if the US EU coalition moves forward with this. So that's how far we've come because they're finding safety in numbers. But yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. And I read that actually. Um, I read that this is an, a little bit of an older article. I did read it. And yeah, I don't think it's, um, and they were probably told that too. That look, you know, he probably went through and said, look, I, I don't want to, you know, force you into doing this, but this is what's, what's going to happen. Um, that's kind of the playbook that we've used for a long time. It's one of coercion. And if you even look at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, it's all about cooperation. If you look at the BRICS, there's not going to be a common currency, at least not yet. It will be a common settlement currency with every country maintaining their own central bank digital currency and their own monetary autonomy. The BRICS use a rotating presidency so that there's not one voice louder than the others. These are all things that maybe they're learning as a result of what happens if you go around the world in a in a unipolar way and, and doing it in a coercive manner. So um, I know that this is the only place I've ever read that, but it makes good sense to me. The introduction of a BRICS currency settlement system poses significant challenges for the West. As more countries adopt this system, the demand for U.S. dollars and treasuries could plummet, leading to a devaluation of the dollar and a potential crisis in the U.S. Treasury market. Schechtman notes that the longer the BRICS nations wait, the higher the price of gold is likely to climb, further undermining the Western financial system. Schechtman also highlights the political implications of this shift. The West's historical approach of using coercion and military might to maintain economic dominance is being challenged by a new paradigm of cooperation among BRICS nations. The rotating presidency within the BRICS organization ensures that no single voice dominates, promoting a more equitable approach to global economics. As the BRICS nations continue to strengthen their economic position, the West faces a dilemma. Schechtman suggests that the traditional approach of lowering interest rates to stimulate the economy is no longer viable. With $14 trillion in debt needing to be serviced, the Western financial system is at a tipping point. Lowering rates might provide temporary relief but would ultimately reignite inflation and signal to the world that the U.S. dollar is losing its value. Schechtman quotes Ludwig von Mises, emphasizing that there is no avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The West must choose between a voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion or facing a total collapse of the currency system. This dire warning underscores the urgency for Western nations to rethink their economic strategies. I have a hard time. I've said forever, I, I can't imagine that they would lower rates and they haven't so far. I mean, remember there was going to be four or five cuts for sure. And then, well, maybe one and then maybe none. Maybe they're going to raise and there's $14 trillion in debt that needs to be retired this year as maturing debt or to pay interest expenses or to cover the ridiculous amount of irresponsible fiscal spending and deficits of our government. How the hell do they do they come up with that? Um, maybe you can, as rates have been going down, what you are seeing is, is the Fed intervening already through, as Jim Willie puts it, um, the UK and um, Ireland and the Cayman Islands funneling money under the table because, look, when when you have a situation where more bonds are sold than our bought rates rise, right? But when more supply, that's more supply than demand. But when more bonds are bought, then our sold rates fall. So we're supposed to believe that someone is interested in buying our 10-year treasuries. And they are doing so to drive rates down. I, I just have a hard time, just a hard time believing anyone would be buying our bonds right now. When all when we see Russia and China and 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 Japan dumping our bonds right now, I have a hard who the hell's buying it? Is it monetization? Look. I think it's important to remember. There it is, right there. And I think it's important to remember. He's a buyer Ludwig of bonds right now, I hear. Yes. Well, look what Ludwig von Mises said. I'm going to read it. He said, There is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as a result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion. Well, we're not there yet or later as a final and total catastrophe of the currency system involved. We're heading in that direction. You lower rates, you have acquiesced once again. You're just going to reignite inflation. Yeah, the numbers they tell us are all fugazi. 
You can't believe them. Inflation is way higher than they're telling us. And this is a politicized event by the Fed to lower rates uh, two months before the election. Um, and, you know, it, yeah, if they do it, fine. But I, I think it's, it, it's, it's stupid. And they'll never normalize their balance sheet. And it just signals to the world, why the hell would you want to sell us your oil or your commodities for a currency that, once again, will give in to inflation over austerity? Um, and once again, is, is is rigged. I mean, it's rigged in every way, even in the way that they measure all of the, the, the numbers to gauge their policy decision, including unemployment numbers. And if, if they hired John Williams instead of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, maybe we would be able to direct monetary policy to right the ship. But what they are doing by giving in and lowering rates is the worst thing that they can do and just giving up on ever on ever getting this this house in order and you know it would start with stop spending and the spending that we do is ridiculous one hundred thousand dollars per second is the amount of debt that we are creating that's a trillion dollars every hundred days and 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 not slowing down so yeah um if if you believe that inflation is where it is i got i got a bridge to sell you and that's why you take a look at all of these markets that just keep going straight up when compared against, you know, against um, like the 10 year treasury, when you're comparing it, all, all of these markets are going straight up all that money that's been created and poured into the system, whether it be gold or Bitcoin or the S&P or, or, or the NASDAQ, all of these things are shooting up because of all this money and that will just keep it going higher. So it's good for gold. It's good for the market. Um, and ultimately it's not good for this country so yeah they'll probably lower rates but i think it's really a dumb thing because it's only going to make uh, a bad situation ultimately worse